Hello and welcome. What do stories say? I'm Dr. Pauline Baird. I'm a cultural bearer from Guyana, the village of Buxton. Buxton is known either for its fame or infamy. At the end of the day, many people think they know Buxton, but they don't know Buxton. They know about Buxton. I'm here to tell our stories. I tell our family traditions, our whispered stories, and our hidden and even long forgotten and practiced traditions. Lao Tak story. The story I want to talk about today is a church story. In Buxton, you've got a lot of religious people and people go to church. I used to go to church a lot when I was a child, to the point that my father used to say, I lived at the church and perhaps he was right I was always at the church so it's no small matter that I know a lot of church stories so here goes one morning we had prayer and fasting and I had a prayer partner a grown woman so we knelt down to pray I prayed my little prayer and then it was her turn now this lady used to pray really long and so she started to pray and it was, you know, normal. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this and bless us for that. But as the prayer began to get longer, it began to get more heated. To the point it began to be something like this. And Father God, bless us, Father God. Protect us, Father God, from falling trees, stinging serpent, and biting beast, oh Father God. When she said the biting beast, she had me. I almost passed out. Biting beast? That story has stuck with me all these years. And so I decided to think a little bit more about this notion of the biting beast. So, today I'm going to talk about the fantastic beasts of Buxton. I went and did a little research about these beasts that she could possibly be talking about. So I called up Colin Peters in Canada. Colin, you know about beasts of Buxton? What kind of wild animals you know about? He said, well, they got lava, which is a game meat. People hunt the lava and they would drink the rum and eat the lava. And he said it is, it is it's his, his preferred meat. It is meat of choice. He likes it better than chicken and pork. I asked other young men of Buxton who would have been a part of the hunting situation about these meats and they confirm that they have different kinds of animals. So I decided now to go and ask the maestro about these beasts. I asked one young man named Linden France and listen to me, that's his government name. His real boxer name is Joker. So I asked Joker, man, tell me about them beasts when they get a Buxton. What kind of wild animals they get a Buxton? He said they got lava. Well, mind you, they say if you eat lava and drink company water, you're true Buxtonians. That's apart from your navel string. That's the second way you can be a bona fide Buxtonian. He said there is lava. I asked him what lava looked like. He said lava looked like a little pig, a little like a little rabbit kind of thing. I asked my brother, I said, do you know about lava? He said, yes, lava live in the back dam. It is a vegetarian. <laughs> it was kind of funny to me because my brother is a Rasta and he's a vegetarian. And here you have a lava, is a, is a vegetarian in the back dam. Interesting, at least to me. So I asked Joker, I said, tell me more. He said, they got Yaisi. They got Yori, they get Mangoose, they got, um, uh, what else, Aguti, all these different things. I said, oh, well, there was one beast that really fascinated me because I knew of this animal in childhood. Now, let me tell you about childhood. In childhood, we used to think there is a beast called the crab dog. Let me tell you something. In all my studies, I know a crab is a crustacean and a dog is a mammal. But in Buxton, 
my box time, crab and dog just come together and get crab dog. So we had crab dog. That's one irony. According to us little children, crab dog's habitat was a special place. You see, back in the day, in the 1800s, after our ancestors had purchased our village, they, they made a church. The church was, some, was there, was built somewhere like 1886, thereabout. You can correct me if I'm wrong. And beneath this church, there was a crawl space. I think it's, it's still there. It's a crawl space. And that is where we believe that this fantastic beast lived. And here's another irony. Do you know what is the name of that place where the crab dog lived? Buxton people, if y'all know, type it. I can tell the other people who don't know the secret. The name of that place was Devil Hole. Under the Anglican church, there was a devil hole. And this creature that defies human reasoning, even genetics, and all kinds of taxonomy, and, and species, and genus, and whatever else, this crab dog lived. So we used to be scared of the crab dog. I don't know if they didn't want us to go in that hole or whatever, because as kids, we were pretty curious. Maybe they didn't want us to go in there, so they told us the crab dog lived there. So we had an idea of this crab dog. Let me tell you what crab dog looked like for us as the kids. Crab dog used to run sideways. And crab dog had its head between its legs when it ran and it looked backward. So in our mind, this fantastic beak was a, was a thing that ran sideways with its head backward, looking backward. Unimaginable. But in our minds, that was what it was. And so I asked Joker, you ever see crab dog, boy? He said, yes, I see crab dog. He said, crab dog is really a wild dog. So I said, well, how come I have never seen a wild dog in the village? You know, we have dogs, we have stray dog. Stray dog that named Rex and Rover and Spencer and so on, but no wild dog in my time. So he said, the dog is really a very shy creature. So it's not around when people are active. And I said, well, why is it called the crab dog? And he said, because of its diet. It ate crabs at the seaside and so on. That kind of made sense. And I thought for a minute that this whole crab dog story invites another conversation about our landscape. See, Guyana is about seven feet below sea level. And it's very noticeable from my village. I grew up five houses from the Atlantic Ocean where my grandmother lived. So we used to go up the seawall. We had to go up a little elevation. But my grandmother said when she was a girl, there were trees along that area, the cruda trees. And she said the birds laid eggs there and the, the crabs used to come there. And my mother and her siblings used to go crabbing out there. And the history of, of Buxton would, would show that part of Buxton was way into the Atlantic Ocean. Where the sea walls are now, that's not where Buxton ended in the north. Buxton was over in the ocean. That's now the ocean. And if you go to Buxton Front, when the tide is down, people say you would see pillars that used to be buildings out there in what the ocean has claimed. So the whole notion of the crab dog brings back to me the idea of growth and change. What we have and what we've lost. What we've gained and what we might still want to think about. Um, and the whole notion of the crab dog. Do, do people even think about the crab dog? Do kids talk about crab dog? So I would like for those conversations to go on in the village. Um, so I talked about there about two sets of ironies, the crab and dog coming together, the crab dog living in a devil hole under the Anglican church. 
But there's another thing happening with the crab dog. The notion of what the crab dog is or its characteristics has jumped from the animal to humans to the point where to be called a crab dog is a terrible thing. A crab dog is a depraved human being. Base. Nasty. Dirty. Aberrant. Abhorrent creature. We don't want to be called a crab dog. If people call you a crab dog, it's an expletive. It's a curse word of the highest order. So if people say, Go on, you crab dog! They mean... You're the meanest, nastiest, dirtiest, no good damn, no good body. If you know the crab dog story, loud talk the story. What good?